There was a report yesterday that Connor was knocked out uh, in training. Now, I helped to fuel that. A lot of people did, but I was one of them. I was guilty of it because largely of timing. I sit down, I do this podcast, and then there's about six-hour break before the podcast gets put out. So this isn't live. It's just really close to live. There's a quick edit. It gets released. It goes through a, a couple of channels and comes to you guys. Well, in that six hours, it came out that, that, no, they were having some fun with some media reporter that was being a knucklehead, and he got burned on it. So so we all got burned, too. But let's connect with Audie real quick and just clear a couple of these things up. You're welcome. You're welcome. With Jail Sonnen. Audie, what's happening, buddy? Mr. Sonnen, how are you, sir? Hey, I'll get right to the point because I only got you for a couple minutes. You know, I, I want to ask you some questions, but first I want to start with a congratulations. You are now managing two uh, world champions in, in Conor McGregor and Michael Bisping. Congrats over the weekend. Hey, appreciate you, man. Um, thank you, and uh, it's an honor to, to have that role and that and that uh, responsibility. Hey, I got to ask you uh, real fast because we always have to look to the future. I, I, I thought that Bisping's performance was amazing, and I thought that his post fight interview was also amazing because he he did bring up some really good points. That hey, this job isn't mine right now. It's it's the job of the division. You guys figure out who the number one contender is, and I'll be here waiting. In your opinion. What is the qualifying match? Is it Romero Weidman or is it Jacare uh, versus Rockholt? Listen, I, I believe it's the Weidman Romero fight, no question. I think um, you look at uh, the fact that you know Chris obviously had um, you know the one ninety nine booked and unfortunately had to pull out, and then fortunately for my for Michael, you know, and that's the unique situation I'm in. I represent both those guys. Um, the difficult part probably is, is when they have to face each other in competition. I, I may have to just stay home and wish everybody a healthy match and the best competitor of the night to win, you know? Yeah, no, I do, I, I do get that. It puts you in a tough spot. But that's a good problem to have, frankly, right? When both your guys cl- uh, climb the ladder, it's a good problem to have. You, hey. you know, listen, again, from a business standpoint, yes, but when you respect the men in, as individuals, and, and it becomes it becomes difficult. It's not, it's not fun, actually. So that's the human element to this all. Yeah, and you know what? You're talking to the right guy. I was in a similar spot. I got a, a coach's season of the Ultimate Fighter, which is, of course, a tournament base. Both of my guys made the finals. I got up and walked out of the arena. It's like I'm, I, yeah, I don't want to see this. It was, it was difficult. Yeah, yeah, I hope you both difficult. both end healthy. Whoever wins, wins. But no, I, I totally understand that. Hey, let me ask you one thing to put a rumor to rest. There was a report yesterday. It ended up being laughed off, but I talked about it yesterday because at the time that it came out, I'm talking about Connor being knocked out in training. Not that it would have anything to do with anything anyway. But when when it first came you know, out, Audie, I sat down at the yeah. microphone. So I I'm one of the guys that fell for the right. I fell for it, and then I found out they were just putting some reporter on. Can you just clear that up? Yeah, it's it's, it's BS. Actually, you know, if you go to Coach John Cavanaugh's page, I, I love he that he had uh, he posted a picture of him with a unique looking hat on, and that says, "I want to believe," and it reminded me of Mark and Mindy of it, <laughs> and his powers. <laughs> so I think that's that's best. That's the best way to describe, you know, how how accurate those reports are. They're false and they're definitely not true. And I get it. I love that Kavanaugh's having some fun. I know he works hard behind the scenes in the gym. I'm glad he has some fun. Adi, I'm looking at the time. I know you got to get into a meeting, buddy. Thank you for calling in. Hey, Chael. Thanks for the time, buddy. All right, take care. We got a few things going on today. You know, I woke right up and there's a big debate going on, largely because we're coming off the big fight with uh, Michael Bisping and Dan Henderson. So at the end of the fight, Bisping does an interview, and he actually he bur- I thought he burned down the whole division in about 15 seconds. But aside from the entertainment value of it, he made some fair points, which is essentially this: He said, "Look, here I am. I'm the champion. I'm uh, this is where I'm going to be. My spot's already. Uh, my next fight's going to be a main event for the middleweight championship of the world. You guys go figure it out." Everybody wants a piece of me, you know, whether whether it's Weidman, it's Romero, it's Jacare, it's Rockholt. These are the four leading suspects. We get it, but he made a case that you guys go figure it out. I've already got my spot. And so, so I think the big question is, who is he going to fight? Which one of those guys does make the most sense? I can make an argument every which way you wanted to, and I'm not positive that it comes down to uh, the winner of this match or the winner of this match. I don't think it's a semifinal situation. I think Romero it maybe has the hardest argument. 
and he, he's got an incredible skill set. That's not in question, but he might have the hardest argument. I don't know that he's been exposed to the fans enough, and eventually, when, when everything's equal, it comes down to the fans. Who do the fans want to see? It is a business. What fight do fans want to see most? Usually, from a competitive standpoint, the fight that the fans want to see the most and the hardest and most deserving guy all align. But not always. So if Romero was to beat Weidman, they may just default to, to the other fight, which is Rock Holt and Jacare, both of which have great arguments and both of which have big fan bases. And a lot of you guys won't understand how big the Jacare fan base is. But it's humongous. It just happens to be in Brazil. But MMA is the second biggest sport in that entire country. So he's got literally an entire nation behind him. A lot of people miss that. Now, you, you take Romero, for example, who, again, skills no not in question in the least. Uh, he comes from Cuba. Well, MMA barely even exists in Cuba. He, he isn't a national hero there that's got a big demand of an entire country. That leans toward Jacare. And when all things are equal... That matters. So uh, let's see how that whole fight plays 